Now, who would have thought that the microwave would be the perfect little camera spot? Wow, this is like high level YouTube. -y. Anyone who knows me knows that I will defend work from home until the day I die. I think it is such a privilege to work from home and I think it is the ultimate answer to work-life balance. Not everyone agrees with that. And if you don't agree with that, I'm gonna show you my routine today and maybe, maybe I'll just convince you. Now people say that the downside of working from home is that there's no boundaries. When does work start and end? When does home start and end? And I get that, I agree. There are no boundaries. When we work from home, we have to create those boundaries. Those boundaries are not just gonna be put in place for us. But I think that is so important. I think practicing putting your own boundaries in place is so important. Like when I used to work in an office every day, my mornings before work, they would be utter chaos. I would sleep as late as possible. I would get up, immediately get ready. I would maybe eat, but probably not. My goal was to get in my car as fast as I could in order to get to the office as early as I could. So I would just wake up, immediately go to 100, get to the office and just start. My mornings now, are so so chill. I have time for myself to ease into the day. I have time to make a nice breakfast that makes me happy. A lot of mornings I go for a walk in the morning. A lot of mornings I have time to read in the morning. I have some time to myself to claim my day before my workday starts. But it wasn't always like that working from home. When we first went into quarantine, I would wake up probably at like 8.55 roll out of bed, sometimes I wouldn't even pee. That's probably TMI. But sometimes I would just immediately open my computer when I opened my eyes and just start working. So now you're probably thinking, Tessa, you just admitted that you can have a chaotic work from office morning and a chaotic, unproductive work from home day. What's the difference? Clearly work from home and working in the office doesn't determine whether you're gonna have a productive morning, right? And I totally agree. Whether you're working from home, whether you're working in the office, you have to prioritize having that slow morning if that's what you want. It's not just gonna be given to you either way. But I noticed after a few months of working from home and a few months of like a true slow life, I had so much more energy because there was so much less clutter in my life. Work from home life made my life so simple that now I actually have the energy to prioritize a slow morning. I have the energy and the space and the mental clarity to actually wake up early and use my morning to my benefit. Before, I only had energy to survive. Now, I have energy to refine. And because of that, not just my mornings, but I've refined so many little areas of my life because I'm working from home. Also, I just have to say, if you're following along with the egg journey, today was a win. Today was such a win. Now, I am not and have never been the type of girl that's just gonna chill in my house while I'm uncomfortable in my outfit. That's never been me, that's never gonna be me. Like, I am not that girl who chills in jeans. I am that girl that the second that I get home from something, I'm immediately changing out of my jeans into leggings, into sweatpants. Like, outside clothes? for outside, they're for outside. Comfy clothes, that's for inside. But, this is a huge but. When I'm working from home, I have to get ready on some level, otherwise it's not gonna feel like a work day. That's just a simple fact. Getting ready for the day, whether you're working from home, working in an office, whatever, getting ready for the day is a huge must, but work from home ready is so different than in office ready. And that's why I love working from home, because look at me, you guys. This outfit is so comfortable. I'm not wearing a bra. But is this an outfit that I would just chill around the house in, watch TV in, be comfortable enough to just be a bob in? No. It's elevated enough to make me feel like it's work time, but it's comfy cozy enough to be in a good mood. And my mood is so tied to my outfits. I've told you guys this before. Like I will literally change outfits. Even if I'm just hanging at home, I will change outfits to get the right type of comfy outfit because my mood and my happiness is so tied to my comfort. And that's why like being in an office, even when I graduated from like office corporate to like office jean vibes, it still like honestly killed my soul to be in jeans all day. Now my soul is happy, my soul is free, but I'm still ready enough to feel like, okay, time to grind. So prioritizing a slow morning, that's kind of my first tip of how to make working from home work for me. Having a nice slow morning makes me feel like I have a life outside of work. It makes me feel like my day isn't just completely work. And then getting ready, that's number two. Now, some days the outfit does suffer. Some days the outfit is a little too casual because I am a cozy girl. You guys know this. Sometimes it's hard to find the coziness. But what I do really, really prioritize every day putting my face together. Honestly, I just like doing my makeup. To me, it's like an adult craft. Like I genuinely enjoy painting my face. I love blending the colors. It's like a daily art project. And doing my makeup always ends up being like a weirdly meditative moment for me. Like with the way our world is, it's just so go, go, go. And we have very few moments in our day that are just like calm. And for me and my routine, I think doing my makeup is one of those moments where it's just like still, 
calm and where I really do just like sit, think, reflect. Like, yeah, sometimes I watch a YouTube video or listen to a podcast, but a lot of mornings and a lot of nights when I'm doing my makeup, I am just kind of standing in the quiet, thinking and reflecting. Like, I think it's such an underrated time of day and such a like sneaky, mindful time of day. So every day I do just like the simplest makeup routine. It gets me ready for the day. It makes me feel like it's a weekday instead of like a casual chill weekend. And it's also just fun. I also love working from home because I feel like I weirdly get more of a diversity space than when I work in an office. Like I hear a lot of people defending in office work because it's like you get new scenery. But I don't know about you, the offices that I've been in, the scenery has either been like a blank wall or like a random poster that's like not centered on the wall that some like office interior design person just like slapped there. And when you go to that same office every single day, is it really diversity of space? Like at least when I'm working from home, my environment is what I put together. It's what I selected. And honestly, when I hear people complain about work from home because they're like their environment sucks when they work from home, I'm like, who is really to blame for that? Like, it's kind of you. Like, I don't need some office interior designer to like spark my joy, you know? I'll spark that myself. But I think being at home and living at home, I get it. It can feel like, oh my God, I've been in this apartment all day. So I like to take advantage of the fact that I can work from any place in my apartment. I can work from my table, I can work from my couch, I can work from my office. And I do work from all those places throughout the day. And I think that's a bonus that only exists at home because in the office, you got your desk, your desk your desk or your desk. Not really much diversity of space. So usually if I have like hands-on keyboard work, if I have emails, if I have anything I need to write or anything I need to design, I do that in this little setup on my couch. And no, I don't do it like slumped over on the couch. Like I sit up straight, still got good posture, but I'm on the couch in my living room enjoying this space. And then my setup for calls and meetings, that's in my office. So I'll move over there for those. Sometimes I do take calls from the couch, but I usually take pretty much all my calls from the office. So that's my third tip. I move around the house, I give myself different sceneries just so that I don't end up feeling like I've been stuck in one room all day, even though that's what an office is. I've been meal prepping lunch the last few weeks. It's really been helping out. It's really been making my whole day just so much less crazy. For this week, I've gotten arugula based salad. I meal prepped and chopped up some carrots and celery. And then I have some grilled chicken that I pre-cooked. Well, Miles, Miles did technically cook the chicken. And then I topped that with a blue cheese dressing and then a buffalo sauce. And this is kind of like my take on like a buffalo chicken salad because I love buffalo sauce, blue cheese, chicken. I love all those things. And lunch food is something that I usually get sick of very quickly. So I thought if I just use my favorite flavors, maybe I won't get sick of this or I'm about to ruin my favorite flavors for myself. We'll see which way this goes. One of two ways. But I have to tell you guys a sad story about what my lunches used to be like. It's a real sad story. Basically right before the pandemic hit and right before we all went home forever, I was in probably my worst insomnia cycle I had ever been in. It was so bad to the point where I was getting like one-ish hours of sleep every night. Some days I would be so exhausted that I like wasn't comfortable driving to work. So I would literally Uber to work. On the days that I did drive to work, I would be such a zombie and I would be so drained that a lot of my lunches, I would literally go down to my car in the dark parking lot and I would eat my lunch in my car in the dark and then I would like lay down in the dark for 20 minutes just to like, because I was so drained that I just needed a moment of just like pure silence, no one talking to me, no lights. Like I literally just needed a moment of just like, like honestly, I was just like straight up non-functional. Like I don't know how I thought that that lifestyle was about to be sustainable. Like I was so close to just like full burnout. It was so insane. Like I think back in that time in my life and I'm like, girl, what are you doing? Obviously then I needed a moment to like really disconnect because I was like suffering, you know? But even at home, I really try to disconnect at least for 10 minutes. Like there are so many days at home where like I just straight up don't get a break for lunch. That's just kind of like the nature of my job. Things pop up. But even if my break is only 10 minutes, I try and make it a very productive disconnected 10 minutes. One of the downsides of working from home is that there are no boundaries and I could easily bring this to my desk and just keep working, keep eating, like eat while I work. And I could easily do that. And I would probably function like that for many weeks before I would eventually crash and burn. So really a lot of things that I've implemented in my work from home routine are just like preventative measures to help me not burn out. Now, obviously working from home, 
it's gonna take so much longer to burn out than it would in an office, but it's still possible. Like that can happen. That can happen if you're in an office, but that can happen at home too. So I'm just trying to be really proactive about not getting into that cycle. But all that said, I think lunchtime is harder at home than it is in the office to have boundaries. But I just look at this as an opportunity to strengthen my boundary making tools. In life, we're always gonna need boundaries in many different situations. And if I can't have a boundary when I'm alone in my apartment, when am I ever gonna have a boundary? So I really prioritize like sitting away from my computer, even sometimes sitting away from my phone, but like, you know, I'm not like perfect. And recently what I've been doing after I eat, because honestly this takes me like five minutes to eat this. It's so good, I like shovel it in. So what I do for whatever length of time I have left, whether that's 10 minutes, whether that's 30 minutes, instead of like watching a YouTube video or watching TV or consuming like more media, you know, looking at another screen, I've been reading. And even if I dive into that world of that book for five minutes, it really is like a true disconnecting moment. It takes all my focus, it brings it to the page, it brings it to the story. And even if I read three pages, it is honestly just such a nice way to break up my day. And it really helps me strengthen that boundary. Of like right now, we're taking a break. So that's my next kind of stage in this all. I make lunch, no matter how long it is, five minutes, 30 minutes, if I get an hour, that's just crazy. But I make that time frame an actual break. So whether you work from home or whether you work in an office, you have to prioritize movement. It's not just gonna naturally happen in one environment or the other. And I would tell myself that on those office days, like I was getting out, I was getting moving, like, no, I wasn't. I was going to my car, sitting in my car, going from my car to my desk and sitting at my desk. I was not moving. So do I think being at home gets like an unfairly bad rap for like the stationariness of it all? Yes, I do. I think if you have an office job, no matter where you work, you're pretty stationary. But being at home, I feel like I have a teeny bit more freedom to do my movement, not just before work, not just after work, but I can kind of sneak it in if I have time. And I also feel like just because of the flexible nature of work from home, I feel like my movement and my exercise also takes on a more flexible nature, which is honestly so much better for me. Like I think being rigid with myself and saying like, I'm gonna strength train these days and I'm gonna do cardio this day and I'm gonna walk that day. Like making a plan like that and forcing myself to stick to it, it never ends up working and it never ends up feeling right. So for me, this like go with the flow nature of working from home, that go with the flow nature also trickles into my workouts, which I think actually like works out pretty good for me. Like some days, depending on my energy, I'll be like, this is a great day to go to F45. It's really a good day to kick it in gear. I've also been peppering in a few runs recently. That's a sort of different amount of energy in a different style. On a day like today, I'm not trying to do anything too high energy. I'm really not, but I want to get some movement in. So I've decided in this little window that I have right here, I have like 30 minutes. I think I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go for a little walk and there's some stairs close to where I live. I think I'm going to walk up and down the stairs and do that as my movement for today. And for me personally, I like to pepper in life with work. I think that's the true work-life balance. If you can have moments of life, moments of work throughout the day versus just like life before work, work, life after work. That's why I love work from home so much because it just feels more natural. It doesn't feel so rigid. And I think nowadays we have such a perception that like rigid is productivity. But really for me, I've noticed that I am the most productive when I go with the flow of my day. If I try and force something like, <clears throat> That is not a way for me to be productive. For me, going with the flow is actually the way that I can be the most productive with my day. And if I have like a window here, I'll be like, oh, I can fill that with this if I have a window there. And I'm kind of like tailoring my day as the day goes. It just feels so right. And it might seem counterintuitive, but like, I don't know, I feel like my goal in life and a big goal with my channel is to like prove that productivity takes many different forms. And I don't think there's one right way to be productive. And that's why I like get annoyed at like office culture sometimes because office culture really pushes like, this is the way to do things. This is when we start and this is when we end. And this is when we have a break and this is when we're productive and this is when we're not. And this is when we socialize. Like it prescribes one thing onto everyone. And for some people that might work really great, but for a lot of other people, it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel natural and it actually is very draining which in turn is not something that's going to result in productivity i love work from home because it gives us autonomy it lets me structure my day how it's best for me and it lets someone else do what's best for them and just like learning to create our own boundaries like levels us up as a human i think learning to structure our own day levels us up as a human too like why do i have to let some ceo some boss or some company tell me what is best for my day why don't I figure that out for myself and structure myself and keep myself accountable? Like those are skills 
that are transferable to every aspect of life and those are skills that are gonna be with me forever. Yeah, I told you guys, I was not lying when I said I will defend work from home to the day I die. Like work from home life, it puts the responsibility on us. And while that can be tough sometimes and while that might not be the most comfortable thing sometimes, it puts it on us. Look at all these opportunities for self-motivation. Look at all these opportunities to show my true work ethic, to let that shine. I think that rant was also a little bit of procrastination now that I'm thinking about it. I think I'm trying to avoid doing my movement for today a little bit, but guess what? I'm in control. No one's putting that boundary in place for me. No one's telling me when I gotta do it and how I gotta do it. I gotta do that for myself, so we gotta go do it. I'm sure some of you guys know this at this point, but I am obsessed with Olipop. This is a new flavor for me. I love trying new Olipop. I've tried grape poppy and poppy, poppy is just different from Olipop in general. It's a little more watered down, is not as flavorful. It's still good and it's still my backup, but Olipop is always just so much more rich. It's so much more nice tasting in my mind. And the grape poppy was okay. I'm not the biggest fan of like artificial grape flavor, but my friend Rachel and I were obsessed with trying new Olipop. Every time we find a new one, we send each other a picture, we give our rating. And this is her favorite, which I found shocking. So I'm gonna give it a try. Grape Olipop, will it be my favorite? What does that taste like? Like, obviously it's grape, but it reminds me of something specific. That's so good. I have to text her. Hold on. So fire. Wow. Okay, yeah, this is a new favorite for me. It doesn't taste too artificially, but it has such a tangy aftertaste. Wow, that's so good. So I've said this before, but one of my favorite times of the day is my end of day Olipop. Now, I'm someone who loves an end of day beverage. I love having a nice glass with something sweet with ice. It's just a nice signifier for the end of the day. And I think I've fallen more and more in love with this because I work from home and because my Olipop or some nights it's wine, but whatever my end of day beverage is, it's my signifier that the work day is done. Like the second that I crack the Olipop, like, works over and just holding something in my hand and sipping it and savoring it. It's just like the perfect way to symbolize work is done. Here's your treat. Sit back, relax. Now, obviously, like I've said before, one of the things I like about working from home is that work and life blend a little bit, but I don't like that when it comes to the end of the day. I wanna know when I'm done with work. Throughout the day, work-life mix, that's awesome, that's wonderful, that's productive. At night, work-life mix, that's stress, that's burnout, that's a no-no. So I'm constantly looking for ways to kind of signify the end of the work day. Something that I also do very often is I take an end of day shower. And I've said this before, but I think an end of day shower, whether it's just a body shower or whether you're actually like getting in and washing everything it almost replaces your nighttime commute in the sense that it's like your time your transition time to kind of transition out of work and to decompress like when i used to work in the office the drive home was kind of the time i got in my transition time of like okay i'm transitioning out of work mode transitioning into like at home chill mode if there's anything crazy that happened at work i might be talking to someone on the phone while i'm driving i'm getting it out but by the time i'm home those conversations are done it's time to chill. So when working from home, my end of day shower kind of like becomes that time of where I'm like, still might be thinking about work a little bit, but I'm transitioning my brain out of that mode and into like restorative nighttime mode. So I've got my Olipop, so you guys know this is my signifier. I'm done with work for the day. I didn't have many meetings today, but I had a bunch of writing, I had a bunch of designing, and that's honestly the type of work from home day that I cherish. I feel like at the end of these days, I feel very fulfilled. I feel like I've gotten a lot of work done. I feel like I've like really worked things through in my mind. I've done a lot of work. Days that are meeting heavy, I don't necessarily feel like, I mean, obviously it's work talking through things with partners, but to me it's more of like a draining feeling. And to me, it doesn't necessarily feel like good hard work. It just kind of feels like I don't know, a big ol' energy suck. And that shows, like I think that is like textbook introvertedness right there. Like I would rather write like 20 pages of copy. I would rather design like two decks from scratch than have a day that's like back-to-back -back meetings and just talking. But yeah, regardless, this was kind of a typical day for me. I went on some rants, I did. But I also hope that it made some sense. Maybe I gave you some tips. If you guys work from home, let me know. What is your routine? How do you kind of structure your day? Do you like it? Do you not like it? I'm just interested to hear your guys' thoughts because clearly I have a lot of thoughts on this topic. So yeah, Miles has a work dinner tonight. I could still cook. I really could. But I think I'm gonna order. I'm gonna go take my post-work shower and then I'm gonna fully transition out of work mode. I'm gonna have a nice restorative night so that I can wake up tomorrow 
feeling good and ready to do it all again. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you made it to this part in the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'm curious, do you guys like videos that are more topic based where I kind of like stay on the same topic throughout the video? Or would you rather just like see a typical day and wherever my mind goes within that day? Be careful if you choose that option because it goes, it goes. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time. Cheers.